The Russian invasion of Ukraine marks a turning point in German politics. Many long-standing principles have been thrown overboard. War has broken out in Europe again, and this has taken many people in Germany completely by surprise. With the Russian invasion of Ukraine, especially the ruling parties have decided to change tack on several key policies. Weapons Exports to Crisis Regions Exporting German weapons to conflict areas was long a no-go, especially for the Greens, who are the second largest party in the new coalition government. The Green Party has its roots in the peace movement of the 1980s. The party has supported peace missions by Germany's army, the Bundeswehr, but always advocated a very restrictive arms export policy. Now, following intense public pressure and similar promises from other countries, German weapons will be delivered to Ukraine after all, including 1,000 anti-tank weapons and 500 anti-aircraft missiles. Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock told lawmakers in the federal parliament on Sunday that, despite all the restraints still required in arms export policy, Ukraine must not be left defenseless to the aggressor who is bringing death and devastation to this country. In their coalition agreement, the center-left SPD, the Greens and the neoliberal Free Democrats or FDP had agreed on a restrictive arms export policy that does not allow any weapons deliveries to crisis regions. And they held on to the stance in recent weeks. The coalition agreement also states that exceptions can only be made in justified individual cases, which must be documented in a publicly transparent manner. Baerbock explained her U-turn in Parliament on Sunday, saying, Just a few weeks ago, I stood here and sat on the subject of arms deliveries that a decision to make a 180-degree turn in foreign policy must be taken at the right moment and with full awareness. Now, sad as it is, is the moment to do so. Germany commits 100 billion euros to new armed forces fund upgrading the Bundeswehr. For decades, given the country's history as an aggressor, anyone in Germany who advocated strengthening the Bundeswehr was quickly considered a warmonger. But now, the military is to be upgraded, and massively so. The armed forces are to be brought up to speed with a special fund to the tune of 100 billion euros. Military strategists are now discussing exactly where to invest. For example, they are considering the development of new tanks and combat aircraft together with European partners, especially France. One thing seems certain, there will be a shift away from international missions. Twenty years ago, then-Defense Minister Peter Strzok famously said, the security of the Federal Republic of Germany is also being defended at the Hindu Kush. That was the beginning of Germany's Afghanistan mission. In the following years, the Bundeswehr moved into more and more operational areas far from its own territory, as it was believed that Germany itself was safe anyway. Now the Afghanistan mission is over. The end of the Mali mission, which started in 2013, is also looming, while NATO territory seems to be under immediate threat and possibly even Germany itself. So it's no wonder that the issue of national defense, the original purpose of the Bundeswehr, is coming back into focus. Looking back at Germany's involvement in Afghanistan. Budget principles are thrown overboard. The 100 billion euro for the armed forces is to be a one-off. But defense spending is supposed to increase permanently. For many years, NATO and the United States have been urging the Berlin government to increase defense spending. The NATO countries have set themselves the goal of spending 2% of their economic output on defense. Germany has long spent far less and only recently increased its defense spending to around 1.5% of GDP. The SPD, the Greens and the opposition communist left party in particular have always rejected the 2% target. Now Chancellor Olaf Scholz has announced that Germany will even exceed it. To finance the new military expenditure, the government wants to take on more debt. Germany has already taken out very large loans to absorb the economic damage caused by the fight against the COVID pandemic. The third coalition partner, the business-oriented Free Democrats or FDP, has curbing government spending as one of its core principles. But now, FDP Chairman and Finance Minister Christian Lindner sees no other option than to take on record amounts of new debt. Germany faces gigantic task meeting climate goals rethinking energy policy. Germany is to a large scale dependent on Russian energy supplies. Russia accounts for more than half of Germany's natural gas imports and more than 40% of its oil imports. They can hardly be replaced quickly. The German government wants to significantly expand renewable energies. At the same time, it was planning to phase out coal-fired power generation and nuclear power. 
Hydrogen power is an option that is being developed, but not yet at a point where it can yield large-scale electricity output. When the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine, new gas-fired power plants were supposed to fill the energy gap. To counteract dependence on Russia for gas, terminals for liquefied gas from the US are now to be built. And the government is thinking of letting the nuclear power plants that are still operating and some coal-fired power plants run longer than originally planned. This is particularly bitter for the Greens, because they want to phase out nuclear energy and coal as early as possible. But there are no taboos. Everything is up for discussion, says Green Economy Minister Robert Habak. Ukrainian refugees arrive in Poland. Humanitarian issues. Refugee policy. Relatively little will change in Germany when it comes to accepting refugees. From 2015 onwards, Germany took in hundreds of thousands of refugees from the civil war in Syria, although its policies also generated a great deal of resistance at home and abroad. Now all seem to stand united in the face of an expected refugee influx from Ukraine. Now, German Interior Minister Nancy Pfizer has already agreed with her counterparts from across the EU to facilitate the admission of Ukrainian refugees. Refugees from Ukraine do not have to go through an asylum procedure. They will receive protection in the EU for up to three years, Pfizer announced. What is the issue? Sending arms to Ukraine could mean modification of several decades of Germany's non-interventionist policy. How did Germany misjudge Russia over invasion of Ukraine? Baltic states and Poland had long warned that Russian invasion of Ukraine would be the next step after the annexation of Crimea in 2014. However, Germans remain indifferent, regarding such warnings as exaggerated alarmism. Current as well as former governments in Germany hope that Russian President Vladimir Putin might be deterred if offered concessions without any penalties. Even after the annexation of Crimea in 2014, a major pipeline project, Nord Stream 2, between Russia and Germany was approved and almost operationalized. But Russia's recent invasion of Ukraine has turned out Germans' belief to be only wishful thinking. After Hitler, Germans struggled hard to be regarded as democratic, pacifist, cooperative, understanding, and helpful. As a result, military force, power politics, and national interest have become almost taboo subjects. Declining to be involved in conflict has become the national mantra. As a result, Germany started to lack a realistic thinking in foreign affairs. They have overestimated their influence on the Kremlin and underestimated Mr. Putin's security obsessions over the past three decades. Germans believe that Russia would avoid war in order to reap the peace dividend. German Gandhian dream of a world without any arms has attracted the people who had initiated and suffered most from the destruction of Europe in two world wars in the 20th century. How the peace-loving policy changed Germany Despite being one of the richest countries, Germany starved its armed forces financially. The army has a highly diminished number of serviceable helicopters, submarines, or artillery. Even sending the navy to protect certain shipping routes in order to protect the export opportunities, which forms the basis of German wealth, was condemned as a relapse into military adventurism in large sections of the media. How does this prevent Germany from taking a stand in the Ukraine war? While Ukraine pleads for weapons to defend itself, Germany has hardly anything to offer except tanks that had been decommissioned a decade ago, and for which there is no ammunition available. Mental reservations stand in a way of steering a different course throughout German society. This peace-loving view followed by the chairman of leading Social Democrats' party, as well as various dignitaries made the current chancellor, Olaf Scholz, not to rule in favor of arms deliveries to Ukraine due to massive resistance within his own party. Even the Green Party is prone to facing a similar dilemma. They do not support the argument that the victims of an invasion require to be supported. Germany is an important member of the EU and the NATO but it is extremely conflicted on how deeply it should be involved in supporting Ukraine. Deciding on such a course of action will mean a further modification of several decades of a mainly non-interventionist policy.